Sorry. Just a sec then. <clears throat> Tell us your name and how you're involved with the Born Free Foundation. My name is Virginia McKenna and I'm a co-founder of the Born Free Foundation which started 30 years ago in 1984 under the name of Zucek because when we started we were uh, preoccupied with the situation of wild animals in captivity, zoos and circuses. And then in 1991, because our interests had developed and expanded to include the problems animals face in the wild, my husband Bill Travers suggested that we change the name to the Born Free Foundation, which is what we did. So how does it feel now that the Born Free Foundation has reached its milestone 30 years? I suppose in a way it is a bit of a milestone because when we began, of course, we were totally ignorant of most things about wild animals and how they live in the wild and in zoos for that matter. And we, um, we had quite a battle to, to keep our heads above water as it were. But um, I feel that things have changed very much and because I believe that people saw that it wasn't just a flash in the pan idea, that we were very serious about what we wanted to do and how much we deeply cared about animals in different ways. Um, over the years we've built up the confidence of the public and also we've, we've attracted to us the most wonderful people who really know about wild animals whilst we have learned ourselves a good deal. Nevertheless I think people trust us and trust of course is a very important aspect of anybody's work. So. I feel enormously grateful that we're still here 30 years on and for the next 30 years of course which I won't play a part in but nevertheless I think we're so strong and my eldest son Will who's played such an enormous part in it right from the beginning because he founded it with us I feel there is a real hope that we'll continue on and on until lots of things we can't bear have changed for the better. Do you feel that you've achieved um, some or most of what you set out to um, those 30 years ago? Well, <laughs> we've made a tiny, tiny dent, I think, in all the huge problems that we faced then and still many of them exist today. I mean, even now, all these years later, we still have wild animals in circuses. We still have animals, wild animals in captivity. We have now increased poaching of these animals in the wild, you know, for the most bizarre reasons, just because you want a bit of tusk or a bit of rhino horn or a lion skin on your floor. These things still exist. The challenges are possibly even greater now, but so is our determination actually not to give in. What role Land Rover have played um, in the history of the Born Free Foundation? Oh, well, Land Rover came into our lives in 1964. I mean, all those 50 years ago when we um, sailed to Kenya to make the film Born Free because of the, the Adamsons always used Land Rovers when they were going through the bush. And um, of course, in the film, we did too. So that was our introduction to Land Rovers. And um, Land Rovers have always been part of our lives because of the work we do here in Africa. We even had an old long, long wheelbase Land Rover at our home in Surrey to bring blogs in from the woods. And now we, you know, we're so grateful for all the things that Land Rover does to help our work. A Land Rover in India, Shamwari, um, Ethiopia, name it. There's always a Land Rover there to help us with the work for all the different reasons that we need to do the work. How important are the vehicles to Born Free then? What, what role do they play on the ground in initiatives like this here in Meru? Well here in Meru of course we have a, a project which we've just started now which is um, trying to protect the animals that live in this quite unique park, um, quite far north with its own challenges, but there is increased poaching in the park in the form of snares, bush meat. And we've just been out today looking and we've seen a snare high up in a tree where they, they actually caught a young giraffe. You can't imagine that, how, the agony that that creature died in. And so Land Rover enables us to get from A to B and B to C and C to D in the unique way that Land Rover can. It's not the same kind of Land Rover that we used in Born Free, of course, when we 
carried lions in the back or on the top. But nevertheless, Land Rover is an essential part of the work we do and I hope always will be. Can I ask you, why, why do you think it's important that organisations such as the Born Free Foundation exist in today's society? It's, it's strange actually because there are a lot of wildlife organisations, charities um, and animal charities, human charities, because sometimes I feel the government depends on more political aspects of life and, and commercial things, who is going to be there to look after the more vulnerable creatures in our world? And in, in our small way, we hope we can help the vulnerable animals of the world and other organizations do it too, but there are so many issues. There's room for us all. We just have to need, we just need to work in harmony with each other. And uh, you know, accept that all of us are already too little. We need everyone to be concerned, everyone to be involved in all the issues, both for children, animals, old people, all the things that really matter and who suffer when they're not helped in some kind of a way. And we hope that we can do our bit for animals. How can people at home um, help to support the Born Free Foundation? What can they do? Well, it rather depends on their own capabilities. I mean, some people help us by joining us and becoming members, so they support our work in general. Some people like to work, to help us by adopting an individual animal. In that way, they get to know this animal and its, its past, its history, and if it's got problems with health, pay for its vet bills, all these things. They can support a particular project that we have. Um, they can have their own fundraising events. They can come to ours. There's a myriad ways. They can volunteer sometimes. Um, there are so many ways people can help. Sometimes, you know, it's even a letter. One of the most touching things that I get when I do a lot of letter writing for the organization of thanks, um, I get letters sometimes from people who, in memory of someone who's died, instead of flowers, they want to send a donation to us. And I think they're going through a personal, deeply sad time, and they've had time to think of the animals and the things we do. Now that is enormous. Even if it's a tiny sum of money, for me that's huge because they've thought about it and cared about it. And um, generous spirited people, there are lots of them around, it's wonderful. Um, what are your hopes for the future of Born Free and I guess for the world in general? That's an enormous question, isn't it? Um, I hope that reason will prevail and that the obsession uh, in some countries in the world for these little pieces of animals, which means the whole animal has got to give its up, up its life, will actually stop. We have to stop it because if we don't stop it, the animals will go and then the whole balance of nature will be distorted. Balance is absolutely essential in life and nature does it really well by itself. And we come along and we turn it upside down, it's topsy-turvy and it's chaos. It's often chaos when we interfere. So we have to be very um, sensitive to nature and nature's needs, the animal's needs. Just withdraw, don't always interfere, don't always manipulate and change look and learn and understand from nature and then I think we can live in harmony and certainly um, I don't suppose I'll see the end in my lifetime of animals in captivity but I certainly hope I'll see the end of animals in circuses in, in UK, the UK if nowhere else and I hope that message which will be a very powerful one if at last our government takes that stand I think that will have an enormous impact on other European countries so I have to be always optimistic and hopeful, particularly as so many young children bec have become involved now, and that's the hope for the future. Okay, what, what, what does this initiative here in Meru mean to you personally? This initiative in Meru means a huge amount to me personally because this is the birthplace of the Born Free story, with the, the real story of the real Adamsons and Elsa the Lioness. 
I mean, you can, she was released to the wild here, she's buried here, people visit her grave. The spirit of Elsa, as Joy used to call it, is truly alive and flourishing here in Meru. And we sort of carry that spirit with us as we travel and go around the world from Africa to other countries. That spirit of Elsa, the individuality of an animal that can feel and suffer and can feel joy as well. Um, I, I, this initiative here in Meru is going to carry that on in a way that I, I know that both the Adamsons would be thrilled about and certainly to make them happy is a bonus for me. All the memories of this place here in Kenya, what, what do you miss the most? <laughs> um, what do I miss the most? In Meru, you mean? Yes. Oh. Oh, oh, yes. I suppose I miss George, George Adamson, who was the hugest influence in the lives of both my husband Bill and myself because of his profound understanding of wild animals, not ju not only lands, squirrels, guinea fowl, weaver birds, whatever. Um, he just knew about how animals functioned and how we should learn to read their messages, not always impose ours on them. I'm sorry, there's a horrid fly buzzing about it. It's a little lintless. It doesn't matter, it's part of the scene, even the fly. <laughs> um, so I suppose, although he's always with me in spirit, as all the people we love are, um, I do miss him, his presence here in Meru, and uh, as you miss old friends everywhere. But as I said, he's, he's never really left, has he? Thank you. That was fantastic. Thank you. Okay, we're done. <laughs>